Hello friends. So this video is one I've been working on throughout the month. I really wanted to do more videos where I can take you on little adventures with me and speak a little more off the cuff, but I knew that would be a little more intermediate level. Getting used to speaking to the camera as if it's a friend and remembering to bring the camera with me and getting better at composing interesting shots and all of that. So I wanted to start getting better at that and I figured no one's going to be watching this channel anyway. I just started it. So there's going to be a lot of noises of background cats in this video, just to warn you. And then somehow I ended up with 4,000 subscribers. That was basically almost all in this month. I think I had like 400 when the month started. And I can honestly say this was beyond my wildest dreams or plans for this channel, at least anytime soon. So now I just feel like, what? <laughs> it went well? It went better than I expected? What do I do? This year started with me deciding that I was just going to put everything on the table. I was just going to be, I was just going to be fully myself. I was going to be very honest. I was going to make YouTube videos where I just kind of put my whole self out there, whether it was my childhood sketchbooks or talking about my failures or anything. Like, what do I have to lose? This is my midlife crisis, okay? I think this is what my midlife crisis is. And it seems like it struck a chord with a lot of you. It is definitely way too early to say this is like my biggest success or anything like that, but it would be pretty hilarious if my biggest success came for me making videos about my failures in life. <laughs> Come on, Reinhardt. And I feel like there are just so many of you I could talk to for hours. In fact, it feels like an overabundance of cool people. Like, I can't actually be friends with 4,000 people, which is unfortunate. <laughs> but this month has been amazing, and it already feels like I have a little corner where my people can hang out. I hope to kind of build on that in some way, but it's all very new, and... It definitely made the month's plans go in different directions than I expected. It's that time of year when winter turns to spring. The dreary days are giving way to mild sunshine and it feels like a great time to have finished a book. Hello friends, I'm Lydia Foxglove and I'm a fantasy author. About a week ago, I finished the first draft, well, I say first draft, I edit as I go, so who knows what draft it is really, but I finished some draft, and it's the first time it's had a beginning and an end and a middle, and now it's time to turn to editing the book. And I have to say, I've been a little depressed this week. Finishing a book is such a high, and then once it's done, I get so sad, <laughs> like, then I have to start thinking about how I'm going to market the book, what the public perception will be. Even the editing process has a certain level of stress just because I'm thinking like this is my last chance to like do things to it that will make it sell. And I get into my head a lot. For all the books I've written, it's still hard to get to the end and face the like idea of people actually reading the book and it not just being mine anymore. Nevertheless, I do need to edit it and I'm actually pretty excited about it overall. As I was writing the ending, some of the characters that weren't quite clicking for me the whole time I was writing, suddenly I had kind of that moment where I understood who they really were, at least I hope so. So part of the editing process is going to be going back and fixing some of those interactions. And you know, we're just keeping it really casual today. This is the first time I didn't write any kind of script, not even bullet points, which I might seriously live to regret and never do again. It's weird talking to a camera when you're not used to it. And it's also weird to try and relax and live your daily life. I have seriously renewed respect for people who vlog. I'm sure it gets easier as you do it, but right now I kind of feel like I have a guest over like, hello, would you like anything to drink? The bathroom's there. As you can see, I'm in a different spot in my house, not in my clean nook. It's a little messier over here. We do resin 3D printing, so that's kind of like some of the crap for that. And, and I've always been a messy person, but honestly going through his house, he had such a hoarder house, 
it's made me kind of never want to be messy again. It like completely rewired my brain to where I'm like, I hate this. And I've been cleaning so much more than I ever have in my life, but I still love to hoard stuff. I still have that little dragon treasure brain. And I don't think I'm ever gonna completely, like I'm never gonna be a minimalist. Anyway, I digress. I'm gonna end at this book. I got my trusty computer. I got a sketchbook because I have a couple things I want to kind of sketch out. I'm going to get the stack of papers that was the printout of the book that I made some notes on. And I'm going to get a kombucha. I'm going to take a look at this and I'm going to see what I can do with it. And I'll bring you along. And if you are a writer or you're just interested in how writers work, I'll kind of bring you along in my headspace and we'll see what we can figure out. Okay, got the document, got drink and I'm ready to think. And now I gotta look through these papers, look at some of the notes I made, see what I wanna fix, particularly in regards to the characters. I had some trouble clicking with this cast of characters, I have to admit, like I really like all of them. So I'm not sure what the problem is. Maybe part of it is that this plot has been part of the history of the world in my head for so long. So the plot has kind of come first and the characters have kind of had to fit around the plot rather than the character springing to mind and the plot being driven by them, which is how like the Sorcerer's Concubine was more like that. Velsa and Grau popped into my head and then the plot worked around them. In this case, I want to make the characters feel more like that, even though the story is more plot driven. So the main question is, how do I make these people less boring? Okay, I think I've worked out my plan. One of the things I've had on my mind a lot while writing this is whether my fantasy novels actually reflect things that I truly believe in real life. I was thinking about this while writing the Kingdoms of Sky and Shadow series, which in that book, it goes from a monarchy to a democracy. I didn't really plan that as I was writing the book, but at the end it just felt like, you know, there's a lot of fantasy books about people who are prophesied to rule the kingdom or take some important position and they find out that it's their fate and they accept their destiny and then they become the king or the queen. And I enjoy that story, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of reasons why that is a very satisfying narrative. But it also kind of struck me as weird that I'm writing stories that glorify a person being fated to do a thing and then to rule in a monarchy and presumably for their children to continue to rule and so on when I don't really want to live in a monarchy. In real life, we're often told that this is what we need to do, that we are obviously not fated by prophecy foretold by the oracle or something, but that there is a certain life path that is better for us. This is what we should do. And then in recent years, there's been more and more pushback on that. People are getting a little more individualistic, which is not always good, but there are some things that I think are very positive about it. For example, the idea that you don't have a duty to your family if they treat you terribly. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think through most of history, people have often been pressured by the way society is structured to stick with their family, even if their family is abusive. Now there's more narrative that you know, if your family treats you terribly, you don't have to talk to them ever again, which I think is healthy. Like if you have a therapist, they're probably not gonna tell you, you just need to do everything for your family, even if they treat you horribly. But in fantasy, there's still a lot of faded prophecy and you have to do something that's very difficult, but in the end you accept it and it becomes your destiny and then you become good at it and stronger. One of the things that this book told me that it wanted to be about as I was writing it is a rejection of that narrative. That ultimately these characters don't have to follow the fate that has been set for them. If you were reincarnated for thousands of years and every time you had to be this queen and you never got to be anything else, that actually sounds like a horrible nightmare even though Atora has been rescued from a bad situation. I wanted to reckon with the fact that she is still a prisoner of this fate 
and that when the king finds her, he is still forcing her into a sort of slavery. And in fact, she would also have to have children, except that the very nature of her body has prevented her from being forced to have children. And because of that, people are treating her badly. So when I start to write a book, I don't sit down and think this is going to be the theme. It involves as it goes. But thematically, this book has turned into a book that's about rejecting your fate, and rejecting the idea that just because you're supposed to be the king or the queen and save the kingdom, that maybe you don't actually want to do that. Maybe you shouldn't. And that's a little bit of a spoiler, but not entirely, because the way things are going to unfold, I'm not going to tell you exactly how it's all going to shake out. So that's the overall theme. I still need to make the characters interesting. And how do you make a boring character I mean, I say boring, that's really very exaggerated. I don't really think anyone in this book is actually boring, but how do you give a character a little more something? So I've been thinking about it as I go through this. I don't think there's actually a whole ton I can do with her eye, but sometimes you don't need to do a whole lot to fix a problem. I feel like sometimes my brain, if something's not quite working, I tend to go a little overboard in what I want to do to fix it. Actually, sometimes it's just like one thing that you're missing. I think that might be the case with him because on paper, all the pieces are there. But the one thing that hasn't happened is there hasn't been a moment where he's been really strong on behalf of a Torah. So I'm going to add in a scene where he has a turning point and he really stands up for her in a way that has some consequence for him. Now, his younger brother, Jarlin, he needs a little more work. He's really an asshole. I feel like I don't really like asshole characters, which is not actually true. A lot of my favorite characters are a little bit of an asshole, but I've gotten into their head enough that I understand why to such a degree that they don't seem like an asshole anymore. I kind of wish I was getting there with Jarlin. So as I was writing the end, I started to really get him, I think. But I want to go back through the book and I think I'm going to show him being a little more of a playboy. I feel like it would help if I really see him kind of looking for love in all the wrong places. And then I also want to work on Atora and Tasha a little, their friendship, just in little ways because they talk about the men a lot. So I want to give them a couple conversations that feel more like me and one of my friends when we're not talking about men, but are just talking about other stuff. I want to make sure, you know, they have their own inner lives. Then I need to draw a map of the castle and I need to work out some like specific names and positions for a few of the characters. I hate that detail stuff, but I need to do it and also make sure that the timeline makes sense. Timelines are so hard with romantic fantasy because of course a romance you can't like just jump ahead 10 years and be like picking up where you left off. So you have these very immediate emotions that move pretty quickly and that prevents you from doing like an epic fantasy time skip where you're covering like history. So that's something I struggle with a lot because I love delving into the intimate character relationships, but there's also this broad history that I need to cover. It's so hard, but I have a plan. I know what I need to do. Now I think before I get into like the nitty gritty of editing, I'm going to take a little break to read just to clear my head. I haven't even drank much of my kombucha because I've been so busy writing. So I think I'll sit down with a book, drink my drink, then I might need to have lunch. I will spend the evening working on these edits. Welcome to my reading nook in front of the wall of boxes. My manga shelf is behind all this. I haven't been reading a lot of manga because I can't really get to it, but at least the chair is comfy. And I have a big old stack of books to dabble in. So let's have a nice little reading break. Do you want to see what I'm reading? Of course you do. I just picked up this one the other day. I have never heard of it and I haven't read any reviews. This book deals with a lot of the same themes as my book, The Sorcerer's Concubine did, but it is much darker. It's set in a like dystopian future where people become so indebted that they have to sell themselves basically into slavery as like wealthy people, servants, and pets. One of the blurbs described it as Anne Rice's Sleeping Beauty trilogy where Sleeping Beauty fights back. So far, I haven't seen like a lot of the fighting back part, but I also got Or What You Will by Joe Walton, another book I'd never heard of and haven't read any reviews of. 
It is about an author who has been writing the same fantasy world for a long time and now she's getting old and she's dying and her main character is gonna die with her and he doesn't like that. So he has some kind of plan to save himself, save her. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I really like that idea because I think all the time about how my death will end up killing my characters. <laughs> I couldn't resist Fight Magic Items, the history of Final Fantasy Dragon Quest and the rise of Japanese RPGs in the West. As you know, if you've watched like any of my videos, I love Final Fantasy and other JRPGs, huge influence on me. Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands. Oh, I'm loving this one so far. I loved the first one. I just love the characters. I love the footnotes, everything. My partner has a modeling club at the library, so I end up going to the library every month even if I don't really need to go to the library, and I just, books always come home with me whether I really mean to or not. I just get curious about so many things. So I picked up this time Driving the Green Book, A Road Trip Through the Living History of Black Resistance. After I read The Warmth of Other Suns, I was shocked, horrified, and fascinated to realize how difficult it was to travel while black. It was just very eye-opening and very interesting, so I've been wanting to read a book specifically about that. The Queens of Animation, the untold story of the women who transformed the world of Disney and made cinematic history. I have some art books of various Disney animators, so I just wanted to read their story and I, I saw while I was flipping through it, I saw that Gyo Fujikawa was in here and I loved her art as a kid so much. I didn't know she worked for Disney, so then I was curious to know like what is her deal. And then I got Meanings with Remarkable Manuscripts, 12 Journeys into the Medieval World. I mean, who doesn't love medieval manuscripts? <laughs> <laughs> okay, apparently. He's so, he's so out. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, contrary to what it looks like, this dog is in fact alive. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> well, that was very nice. I 
I was resistant to taking that break because I wanted to get into a groove and get a ton of stuff done. But once I was out in the woods, I realized it was exactly what I needed. So now to head home and get back to work on editing. Hey guys, so I started filming this video last week and right after we went to the Biltmore was when my beloved cat took a turn for the worse and we had to put him down. So I was very devastated and I haven't really done any work on the book. I would really love to. I keep thinking about it, but it's like whenever I sit down to work on it, my brain is just in that weird brain fog haze state that happens when you're just grieving. So what I thought was going to be like a one day editing vlog is kind of turning into more of like a, a month in the life of a writer, <laughs> especially when things are hard. And one of the things I've really been thinking about this week is how much I like want to push myself to work on the book. Almost as soon as Oscar died, I thought, you got to get to work on the book. You got to get it done by X date. But I knew that if I was talking to a friend, I would not tell them to get right to work on the book after they lost a beloved pet. I would tell them, it's fine to take a break. Your brain probably isn't going to be working very well. Just relax and do whatever calls to you for a week or two weeks. So I'm at the one week point about tomorrow will be kind of the one week anniversary and I'm even more feeling that urgency like you got to get to work and today I'm still trying to give myself that grace to just not work. The YouTube channel has been going really well. I'm almost at 500 subscribers as I film this. By the time that I post it, I probably will be at 500 subscribers, which is amazing. I didn't think that I would get to that point that quickly. So that's been really exciting and kind of a bright spot in what has otherwise been a stressful, sucky week. And I'm just thinking if YouTube's more exciting right now, just work on YouTube videos and otherwise just relax for another day or two. The writing is gonna return. And that's something that I've struggled with my whole life and I still struggle with it. So I want to encourage all of you to try to give yourself that space when hard things are going on, and I will try to do the same. I'll be back soon when I get to work on the edits to finish this video and give you an update on how it went. Yeah, and we also did get two new cats. The only bright spot to losing Oscar is that he was kind of a bully to my other cats. So we wanted to get two friendlier cats. Well, actually we wanted to get one friendlier cat, but we went to the shelter and we came home with two. We just couldn't decide. We fell in love with two and they were so different. So I'm gonna try to get a little footage of shy kitties first emerging. There's a handsome boy just kind of hiding out in a weird little corner behind the toilet. Oh. Hello, pretty girl. Aw, you're so cute. I should come out from under the bed. So this is another I guess installment of the month in my life. I'm sorry if you can hear the dishwasher and the furnace are going at the same time so I'll try to clean up the background as best I can but you might hear a little noise. So this month has continued to not really go as planned. This was going to be my big editing month when I last recorded an update for the month. The YouTube channel had just started to crank a little bit and I started to think that I needed to work on that more than I needed to edit the book. I was planning to do like a bunch of TikTok stuff before releasing the book, but since I hate TikTok and YouTube was doing well, I thought, well, even though it's not as much of a quick hit of marketing, I would rather invest the time in that than TikTok for sure. So I've mostly been focusing on answering YouTube comments, kind of rethinking the structure of how all this is going to go, like what I will offer my Patreon and Substack people and just making a few extra videos so I would be able to push the channel over the finish line. It's been really exciting, honestly, but it did frazzle my plans a little. Here's one of the new babies. He's getting pretty well adjusted to things now, although he's not sure about the sound of the dishwasher either. This is Reinhardt. Whoa, and he's such a good baby. This cat is just like love and sunshine incarnate, I swear. So anyway, I'm cleaning the kitchen. Also, if you hear this little squeak toy noise, that's his meow. <laughs> it's so tiny and ridiculous. 
I'm almost done cleaning up the kitchen. I'm gonna make some lunch. And then the rest of the day, as far as I know, is finally going to be a big editing day. I'm at the point now where I feel like YouTube can be put aside for a second. So it's on to serious editing as soon as I've gotten fueled with some food. I've had a little dance break. I've been listening to this album just to sound extra cool. I'm gonna put on some obscure post-punk that if any of you have heard of it, we're best friends now, but I just found this album. It's kind of a combination of like late 70s post-punk, early 70s glam art rock with a little bit of like a Black Sabbath and Rush perhaps thrown in. Since we're now shifting over to writing mode, I'm gonna put on, while I make the dinner, gonna put on the Best of Buffalo Springfield because I feel like it has a little bit more of a fantasy vibe and I want my brain to get kind of geared into fantasy writing mode. So much peeping from this cat. So that's the plan for today. I'm hoping I can get a good chunk of editing done because I'm feeling very behind even though it's not like I've been lazy. As I film this, it is March 30th. The month is nearly over. The day I started filming this video, I intended it to just be a vlog on my editing process for one day. And I sat down to start doing that. And then we decided to go to the Biltmore. I kind of ran out of time, but I thought I'll get back to it. Two days from now, I had to go to work at the bookstore the next day. And then that day that I thought that I would finish up the editing vlog was the day that my cat Oscar took a turn. About a week later, we adopted two new cats because I can't help myself. I was still sad over Oscar, like extremely sad, but it's also like we have room for more cats and that's a hole you gotta fill. And the day after we got the new cats was the first day that I hit 100 subscribers in a day, which shocked me and I couldn't, I couldn't really concentrate. Kept trying to get back to the book and edit it and I just couldn't seem to focus. There was this mix of like grief adjusting the new cats and like, oh my gosh, the YouTube channel, what is happening? And at first I really resisted that I was not gonna get the book done this month because that was my goal for this month. But it started to become clear to me mentally I was not in the right headspace. So sometimes unexpected things pop up and you just have to go with your gut and that's what I did. So here's where I'm at at the end of the month. I've gotten about a third of the edits done as far as page count goes, but most of the edits are going to be in the latter half. So I'm probably 15 to 20% done. I plan to keep putting out one video a week while I'm finishing the book. That should hopefully be done in April. I don't think it's a huge job if I can just sit down and do it. And I'm going to work my way through a lot of the videos that y'all have requested. I want to start the world building series at some point. Start doing artwork as more of a regular practice instead of just an occasional thing. And of course continue just to be a working novelist, bring you along for all of those ups and downs. There is so much to talk about. I'm very excited. Also if any of you do book reviews and you would like an advanced copy of The Broken Queen, which I explained so well in this video in my ramblings, I will link a Google sign up doc in the description. I also I have my Patreon and my Substack where I do a weekly Q&A and as I film this it is free for everybody. Thank you again so so much for all of your kind words and congratulations on hitting these milestones. I'm so glad that my channel has resonated with people and that it's inspired some of you or just bolstered your spirits in any way. It means so much to me and I'll see you again next week. Bye!